afternoon from not so sunny, very cold and very windy Ontario. Sure. Um, my name is David Sim. I'm the president of, of Arbordale. Thank you very much for being here. We're going to run you through um, our introduction to Hewisan for livestock. Um, the good folks at Elm Spring have lined this up and asked us to do it. So on behalf of Gideon and Joel, we'll get this done. Um, with me today, oh, there's Starbright. I'm just going to keep clicking on people. Um, with me today is Bill Ireland, our Vice President of Technical, and Jim Lauchs, who does all of our installs and is our swine expert. So if you've got any questions as we go along, please feel free to just, just let us know. Uh, we're going to talk about, about HUSAN, what it is, what it does, um, why you should have it, and um, give you some of the results that you may or may not have seen from, from your local. So I've got a, uh, I'm just going to share the screen here with the PowerPoint and we'll carry on. Slideshow, there it is. Bear with me. All right, can everybody see that? Show of hands. Yes, no, maybe. Yes, excellent. I saw one hand. I saw one hand, that's all that matters. All right, so um, we're talking about water quality and we're talking about water quality management. Um, we are Arborddale. We also go by Arborddale Ag on our agriculture side. Um, and we are the water company. We are the people who specialize in water quality in the barn, in the pond, in the house. That's our emphasis and our focus. Um, we started off in the ponds with the Healthy Ponds pro uh, product line. Healthy Ponds is for your dugouts, for your, your other outdoor water bodies. And it takes algae filled ponds like that and turns them into that. Um, it's um, non-invasive, non-chemical. Some of you may have experienced it already, but um, so that's what, what, that's what Healthy Ponds is. Healthy Farms is another side of the business and Healthy Farms is a, is a newer treatment. Sorry? Sorry? Oh, okay, Never mind. I was picking up somebody. Um, yeah. Healthy farms focuses on manure treatments, and those are um, that's a manure lagoon in Saskatchewan, and that's the other side of our business. But today we're here to talk about and focus on uh, livestock water, and that's livestock water, swine, dairy, uh, poultry in particular. Poultry is where we really started, um, where we've had our biggest inroads, and where we have the most customers. I think Bill did the math a couple of days ago, and I think we're up to 30 million birds now, Bill, is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So we're up over 30 million birds now, in, um, and that's just in Canada. Uh, so our goal with your water is just to unlock its potential for healthier, more productive animals. That's what we're after. And the reason for that is it is your number one input, and it's the largest portion of your ration. As Jim likes to say, when it comes to swine, it's 80% of your ration. So you need to be paying attention to it because it interacts with everything else that you're, you're giving the animals, whether it's swine or dairy or poultry. It is absolutely an essential nutrient and it affects everything else that you're doing. Um, this is a quote from a, from a annual report from one of the feed companies. And they come right out and say, we treat water like nothing and we take it for granted because we don't pay for it because it doesn't really appear on the feed bill, but we need to take a look at water. And they're absolutely right. And more and more people are taking a look at water. And the reasons are obvious. A bird will drink, what, 1.6 to two times its, its equivalent feed in water, twice that in warm weather. Water is absolutely essential to their early development. Is it essential to, um, to the chick's growth and development? Um, Bill likes to quote a professor from the United States, and he's absolutely right, who says the first couple sips of water that bird takes will dictate its health for the rest of its life. So if that water's not clean and it's not healthy, then you're going to get, uh, that's what you're going to get out of your, your animal for the rest of its life. 
And in every animal, it regulates everything else in the body. So having a, having a healthy animal, having healthy, clean water is going to make the animal's overall performance better in, in ways that may not, you may not think relate to water. Milk quality and volume in dairy directly tied to water consumption. The more water you can get them to drink, the more, wa the more milk you're going to get, the better the quality is going to be. The reverse is also true though. Poor water quality means less than expected results from what you are looking for. So, um, I pulled this from a, from a lecture by um, a professor at Texas A&M who said that it may be the deciding factor, water may be the deciding factor between ineffective and optimum product performance. So if you're, you know, maxi neutro, for, and that's just an example, but if you're adding anything to your feed, anything in particular in your ration, and you're not getting the results you're looking for, water could be the culprit, and the quality of the water that you're feeding could be a culprit. So your water quality has to be a concern. Bottom line really is that healthy water means healthy returns. I know that you have a lot of things to worry about. I know you get up in the morning and you don't really worry about the water. You worry about all the other things to do during the day and things you need to accomplish. But aside from worrying about being awesome, we want to put water to the forefront. And the thing, it starts with, it starts with your water test. You've all taken them. Everybody has to apply them. Um, or show them for government reasons. And when you're taking that water test, what are you looking for? E. coli, coliforms. That's really where it stops for most people. As long as it's a zero, zero test, they really don't, it doesn't go much further than that. Most of those tests, those zero, zero tests that people are getting, they're taking from the wellhead, they're taking from the first half in the barn. And again, they're looking for E. coli and coliforms. So, if that's what you're looking for and you're not, and it's not in your well, then you're probably okay. I mean, you think you're okay. The issue is that you're not testing where you need to test, which is inside the barn at the far end of the barn. You need to get into the barn because that will tell the tale. That'll tell you what's happening. That'll tell you. Can we? Can I? Can I get y'all to, to mute your microphone, please? Because if, if you can press mute, right, it's right. terrific. Excellent. I think we're good. Maybe. If you have the option, please mute. Um, so getting into the barn will tell you what the animal's actually drinking, as opposed to what's coming out of the well. And there is a big difference. And this is one of the reasons there's a big difference, biofilm. Biofilm builds up in those lines. It is not your fault. It is the fault of sick animals, contaminants in the water line, simple presence of bacteria are not treating the water properly. But those biofilms build up. As they build up and they adhere to the wall, they attract other microbes, other debris, other bacteria. They protect, the biofilm will actually protect that bacteria from the things that you put down the line to try and clean it. And the coliforms will flourish in biofilm. So even though the water at the well may be clean, and even though the water that you're taking, that you're getting your zero, zero test from in your water room could be clean or could be zero, zero, it doesn't tell the real tale. It doesn't tell you what's going on inside the barn. And those coliforms are pretty common. They come, they're found in animal and human manure and our digestive tracts, and they're present on the ground. And the animal track them, the animal, it's fairly easy for that coliform to get from the ground into the water. And as soon as it gets into that water, one cow passes it to the next cow, passes it to the next, the one, one chick passes it to the next chick. And before you know it, you have an infestation of coliforms that are making your animals sick or simply making your animals underperform. You try and treat the water, or you try and treat the, the illness that the animal has, but the sickness is still there. The coliforms, the bacteria, the E. coli's are still there, and one animal's transferring it to another through the water line. So you end up with this vicious cycle of infected, underperform, cure, or clean, or disinfect, 
back to infect again. And that's where Hewisand comes in. And that's, that's our whole reason for being is to stop that cycle. So Hewisand is manufactured by Rome Technology in Belgium. Um, it is a, it's a, the company's been around quite a while, but it is a proprietary technology and it's so unique that it's really impossible for, for us to manufacture in Canada or anybody else to manufacture or duplicate. Um, so Rome makes QSN. It comes in 50% and 25%. And it is a stabilized hydrogen peroxide. So it's a hydrogen, we call it a hydrogen peroxide technology, but it is hydrogen peroxide that's stabilized. The little bit of science that you probably that you need to know, hydrogen peroxide is water with another water with another oxygen molecule. So by adding an oxygen molecule to water, we end up with hydrogen peroxide. And it is the oxidation, or it is that oxygen in there that makes all the difference. And that's what makes it a disinfectant. Um, this is a slide from a presentation at the Canadian Water Quality Association. And I think it's important to point this one out at this point. If you look at that chart, that gives you the, when they talk about electrochemical potential, they mean the ability of a disinfectant to kill or to, 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 to disinfect. It's, a, it's a, a, a measure of effectiveness. A hydroxyl radical, best we can get at this point, 2.8 volts. It, volts is just the way it's measured. Ozone, 2.07. The interesting thing about both hydroxyl radicals and ozone is their lifespan is about a half a second. That's their efficacy. So once they hit the water, once they've, they've entered the, the water stream, half a second to three seconds, that's about it. So you may be getting control um, using ozone, for example, ozone air, for example. You may be getting control of bacteria at your input point, but you're not doing anything for the bacteria, the biofilms down the line. We get to hydrogen peroxide, that's 1.78 and then compare it to the other things that you may have been using. Hydrogen peroxide is also on its own fairly short-lived. It's pretty, it, it dissipates very quickly because it gets killed off very quickly by, by bacteria. The, the genius behind uh, Hewisand, and we'll talk about it in a second, is how they've made that hydrogen peroxide last. But it is, one of the top disinfectants available in the world is hydrogen peroxide, and we've had, and Rome has found a way to make it stable. Hydrogen peroxide is non-corrosive. That's important. Uh, means your pipes aren't going to corrode, your fittings aren't going to corrode, and it's not going to chew up your water lines. Um, Bill had a customer in um, uh, in poultry whose plastic water lines absolutely destroyed by acid, absolutely destroyed. And at the same time, the acid isn't getting them the disinfecting results they're looking for. So non-corrosive is important. It's also NSF 60 certified. That means that it is internationally certified as safe for both human drinking water and livestock drinking water. And we've got the certificate to prove it. So it's not just safe, it's approved. It is also EcoCert uh, approved as an organic input for livestock and um, and agriculture applications. QSAN's been used fairly extensively in the food and beverage industry, in the greenhouse industry, in hard surfaces. It is a log seven disinfectant. It is a bactericide, it's a viricide, it's a fungicide. So essentially it kills everything it comes in contact with and it kills 99.9999999. There's supposed to be two more nines there, but I couldn't find a graphic that had them. That's how effective it is comes in 25% concentrations and 50% concentrations. And it's important to point out, it is an oxidizer and sanitizer. It is both of those things and it is registered as such. Putting it into the water line is as easy as putting a peristaltic pump on the wall and dropping a tube, an input tube into your, into your QSN and away you go. That's a chem tech, that's the one we like, but that goes on the wall, connects to the water meter, it's just that simple. There is no odor. There are no volatile vapors. This stuff won't kill you by breathing it. 
It is stable, stable, stable. And it comes in all kinds of, we can get you a tote if you want, which is 1,100 kilos. So um, how does it actually work? The stabilization that I talked about uses an ionic silver or a silver ion that's bonded to the hydrogen peroxide. And that silver ion means that this is one of the very few products that actually draws bacteria to it. It is negatively charged, and most bacteria is positively charged. Sorry, take that back. It is positively charged. I saw Bill's face just go, Ooh. Um, it is positively charged. Most bacteria is negatively charged. Therefore, the stuff actually, the, the HSP molecules actually attract bacteria to them. So think about it as a hunter killer, if you will. And because it's been bound to the hydrogen peroxide molecule, without that positive charge, there is no attraction. The positive charge also helps protect the cell membrane of, um, of the hydrogen peroxide, making it last longer. In a typical hydrogen peroxide, one molecule of hydrogen peroxide, one molecule of bacteria, the two destroy each other. Um, in this instance, that's not the case. The hydrogen peroxide lasts longer significantly longer because it can kill more because of the protection and the, the augmentation that the silver gives it. Uh, it is manufactured in Belgium and it is manufactured on a, on, in a secure facility in a, a um, uh, qualified facility. And it's only got three things in it. Stabilized hydrogen peroxide, well, hydrogen peroxide, ionic silver and ultra pure water. And the silver is so low, it's down around six parts per billion, that it doesn't even appear on the label. Um, because it's so low, it's lower than atmospheric silver. So really the only two ingredients are stabilized hydrogen peroxide and ultra pure water. And that's something that's really worth pointing out. Um, the water that Rome technology uses is ultra pure. It goes through 12 different steps, two of which are distillation and it is the purest water possible. So when the product arrives to your facility, it hasn't been opened, it is still completely sealed, and you are guaranteed that what's on the label is what's in there. Um, we've seen other hydrogen peroxides, um, both stabilized and non, who when you work through an analysis, they've got chlorines in them, they've got all sorts of other things, because they're using tap water to distill or to offset their hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> That's not the case. What you're getting is pure, pure, pure. It is so pure, in fact, again, that, that Huasan is uh, approved in Canada for human drinking water. We have a couple municipalities uh, that are using it for their, for their drinking water. Here, that's here in Ontario. Well, we have a couple of colonies who are using it for their drinking water. And we have innumerable residences, well, not innumerable, but we have a significant number of residences, just homes that are using hydrogen peroxide to, di to disinfect their water. I've got it in my house. Um, it, it's a, a remarkable product. The great joy of, of Huasan is it is low inclusion. You, if you've used another hydrogen peroxide product, you may be used to going in at 100 parts per million or, or 200 parts per million. HSP is, or HSP, which is Huasan, is significantly lower than that. It is low inclusion and it is engineered to support the, to eradicate bacteria and support the animal's health and therefore protect your yields. The direct results of using Huasan in your water, it strips out the biofilm, so it'll control the biofilm while the animals are in the barn. You don't need to run any cleansers. You don't need to run any line disinfectants. You don't need to shut down the water. It cleans as it works. It controls the pathogens in the water. So it stops sick animals from making each other sick. And it stops animals from bringing bacteria to each other through the water line. In poultry, it reduces the clogging in drippers and it improves the barn environment. And we say that for a number of reasons. Um, because we're stripping out the bacteria, the animal's gut is naturally healthier. And because the animal's gut is healthier, you get a better, more, more palatable barn environment. The indir indirect results, and these are the ones that our customers talk about. 
And these are the ones your neighbors talk about. And that is eliminating scours. Base people on USA and say, oh, my pigs aren't scouring anymore. That the pigs are born heavier. That the dairy cows breed back faster. They clean out better. That the water is more productive. Um, and that the animal's health, the animal's gut is more healthy. And we have feed companies recommending us because people using USN get better feed optimization and get better feed, feed results. Um, in swine, and this is really Jim's area. Um, You're doing a fine job. Yeah, you just want to touch, you want to touch on some of the swine results? Just briefly, we've only got the two slides on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, just what you see with the slides there, uh, here in Ontario, we've had inroads mainly with the organic uh, producers, the RWA and humane producers. And the neat thing is they've got very limited options to what they can do and use. So the guys here, like they've, they've physically seen it. David mentioned it earlier. They, they the sows are drinking more, they eat more, naturally convert nutrient better, heavier pigs. And uh, one in particular, uh, we traced at uh, what I still call the old fashioned way is a milk scour. It was just naturally coal ice. Once those pigs got moved at 28 days to the nursery, they broke with K88. When that producer started using it at the sow barn, that eliminated that E. coli on the pig. So it, it just, it transfers, gets that pig off to a better start at the nursery. From there, the guys are running six weeks onto it uh, through their nursery phase, lower mortality. The one guy uh, batches of 500, his first two batches when they came off the sow on Hewisan into the nursery, six weeks, zero mortalities in the two batches of 500. His next batch, he said the only pig mortality, he knew it was gonna die when it came in. The grow finished, the guys are using it to keep those lines clean. We've had uh, a, a couple guys claim that it does uh, reduce the amount of tail biting they see. One of our guys, 1200, weaned to finish in the humane loop. Uh, he could never get below 4% mortality in the system in his first batch on Hewis Sam front to back, lower levels on the finisher side, he was just under 2% mortality. More than pays for itself, better, healthier pig all the way through. Same aspect when you take a hard look at it for disinfection in the barns, it's a natural disinfection. No chemical residues, uh, no scrapings or anything from the organic testers either. It's a non-foaming, that's a big difference for a lot of guys out there considering uh, peroxide in its natural state has a foaming aspect. And uh, with USAN, it's non-foaming, not gonna add any pressure to your water lines anyway through the system. Thanks, Jim. Um, Bill is gonna talk to you about some of the protocols inside the barn, but it's important to point out before we get the bill, what our customers are saying in the various industries. So that was swine. In poultry, they're seeing more water, more water consumption, shipping more weight, fewer condemns, fewer mortalities, RWA birds performing significantly better. And in a couple of instances, we've had people ship birds early because they were gonna go overweight. It's not what everyone sees, and not everyone sees all of those results, but every producer has seen results that convince them that USA is cleaning the water and making for health, healthier birds. In dairy, we already sort of, already sort of touched on it. Our customers say they've seen milk quality and volume increases, stomatic cell decreases, improved service rates, and um, cows cleaning better. Uh, Bill has a customer who who hasn't had a turned stomach since he started on USAN and he used to have them fairly regularly. So it's all about cleaning the water and then getting the results as a result of getting rid of that bacteria. USAN, it, it's, it's a bold statement, but it's absolutely true. 
that stabilize the hue of sand boosts the animal's performance. And it does it by improving the quality and the productivity of the water and therefore improving the gut health of the animal. Um, I touched on the facility earlier. They've got all of their production certifications and they are a state of the art facility in Belgium. And you're not alone. Um, there are 26 countries in the world right now where QSN is being used. It is huge in the Middle East. It is huge in Europe. And um, at 30 million birds, plus all the dairy farms and the swine operations, it's, it's a significant player in Canada too. Um, just briefly, and I, I, I got to get a picture that just has a picture of acid as opposed to their brand. I have nothing against their brand. But producers tell us that they eliminate their acid. They eliminate a lot of the other products that they're using because the HSP is doing the job that it needs to do. So where do you start and where, how do you get going with QSN? Well, first and foremost, there are two keys to success. The first is to test and test that water and make sure you know what you're dealing with and then to plan and be absolute expert when it comes to getting your water clean in that barn and getting the most out of your poultry and your dairy and on swine is Bill Ireland. And Bill, I'm not gonna tell you what to say, just do you, do you wanna talk to them about what we've seen in some of our, that's Bill, by the way. Um, tell them about some of the things people have seen and some of the protocols that you've developed because a lot of what Bill's done is pretty interesting. So um, in general, we've seen uh, in, in flocks all across uh, uh, Ontario and now into the West, uh, we, we've seen uh, lower mortalities. That's one of the things that's one of the first and most evident, especially uh, working with chicks when, they, when new chicks come in. Uh, then we've seen, um, uh, of course, as the flock, we move through the flock and um, we, we've seen uh, lower condemns when the birds go out. Um, we've had some phenomenal numbers come out of the West uh, on condemn rates in some flocks. Uh, they're, they're just so low that it's, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to believe, but, but it's, it's factual. They've showed us uh, what they've done. Um, so what we've done in order to try to help lower mortalities and, and work with our producers, um, we've started kind of a program where we recommend to the producers that, that when their new chicks are coming in, that they go out and they spray the bottom of all the water lines. And uh, it's, a, it's a mixture that's about two, uh, 100 to 200 parts per million, which is basically a cup of sand to a gallon. It's a nice strong kill mix. And so the reason for spraying the bottom of your water lines is uh, it keeps all the nipples clean and kills any uh, surface bacteria. And what we want to achieve is we, we have the sand in the water we want to have it so that when a new chick comes into a barn and they start drinking water, uh, that there's, there's no bacteria they come in contact. They're, they're only drinking nice, clean, pure water that's, that's going to help that gut get started and get a good, healthy start. So there's no competition and no gut stress. And that's very, very important. It's been proven over and over again. That's a very reliable way to help a bird get off to a great start. The other thing we've started doing and uh, is we've started, um, if you're using straw for bedding, uh, we've started misting the straw. And so uh, uh, usually six to eight hours before the birds come in, um, we'll walk through with a, with a hand sprayer, same rates, just mist the straw, just a, a light misting. And all we're doing there is killing the surface bacteria uh, because again, when a new chick comes into the barn, first thing they wanna do is they look for water and then they start picking at things. And if they're picking at the straw, we want to at least uh, give them a fighting chance to, to lower that bacteria rate so that we can get a, a good healthy chick starting off. And uh, so we we've, we've have our producers uh, managing the level of peroxide they're putting of HSP they're putting in the water according to the flock. Um, if you get a flock started off good, they're a very healthy flock. You can run that flock at 20 to 25 parts uh, per million. Uh, if they're a flock that comes in and it's, it's been compromised from the hatchery, if, if there's birds that aren't healthy when they come in, 
we start them off in the 40 to 50 range. We get them up high, try to get the gut cleaned out as best we can. Um, as the birds move through the flock, we find that from day 12 to day 16, there's a period in, in flocks where there, there are some issues with birds, uh, broader birds especially, uh, where they, they're, they'll, they're certain other diseases will start to manifest themselves. During that period, uh, we tell producers if they're seeing anything at all that they're suspicious, uh, take it up to 40 parts per million, uh, run the flock for four to five days, turn it back down. And the other thing we recommend is the last five days, uh, go out and turn it up to 50 parts per million, finish the flock at 50 parts per million. And the reason for that is it cleans the gut out, keeps it good and clean. And when it goes to, uh, to slaughter, uh, the condemns are lower for salmonella, listeria, E. coli, coliforms, any of those things that, that they condemn on, uh, it will help the birds. And it does make a difference. And, and uh, producers have been telling us that their, their, uh, their condemn rates are lower, which is what we want. Uh, some of the things that we've noticed is, uh, and this is again producers telling us, is that they've noticed that, that they're having uh, less small birds left behind, that the, the growth of the birds is more consistent. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's just good, clean water and good, clean water enhances uh, growth, of course. Um, we've had uh, organic producers here in Ontario tell us uh, and, and regular producers that they've had to uh, uh, send their birds out a day early. And uh, so for an organic producer, uh, he explained to me on 23,900 birds to send the birds out a day early. It saved him uh, several tons of feed and at $900 a ton for organic feed here in Ontario, it's a huge savings. Um, we've noticed our feed conversions are better um, consistently with, with uh, uh, a number of producers have told us that there, it's a very consistent rate. Uh, we're also very involved in the duck industry and uh, we work with some hatcheries here, uh, people that have duck hatcheries here in Ontario. And uh, we're really working hard with the breeder flocks to get the breeder flocks uh, on our product. We have a lot of them now and we, we're hoping to get a lot more. We believe, and, and I have the backing of a lot of feed sales rep representatives and other industry reps, that if we can get a better breeder bird, a healthier breeder bird, uh, turning out a better egg for, for, uh, for the hatcheries, that you guys in the broiler industry will get a better chick. And it's pretty much proven the hatcheries that have followed the program are seeing better quality chicks come out of them. So it's, it's definitely something that uh, we've been pushing and working towards. Uh, we're working more and more with turkey producers uh, same thing to in, to enhance the growth and and uh, get better feed efficiency, uh, lower mortality rates. These are things that we've seen, and this is a lot of this is producer driven. Um, we've we've seen some some pretty interesting situations, and and uh, our our producers are very involved in in our everyday activities. Uh, both Jim and I and David, we talk to our producers regularly. And um, we try to we try to stay on top of things. And I know sometimes we're we're a day or two getting back to you guys. Sometimes it's just it's just because we're we're trying to stay uh, you know in the loop and keep everybody happy. So um, uh, that's about all I can tell you right now. And carry on, David. It's not always easy to keep everybody happy. Um, I would like to the the slide that you're looking at now. Um, yeah, we actually have a mouse farm. Uh, somebody who, who farms rodents. Uh, the issue really isn't single species. It is any species of livestock. Um, they all benefit from better water, cleaner water, and, uh, and a better environment. So that's, if you've got questions, that's what we're here for. We've given you the nuts and bolts of what QSAN is and how it works. Um, I would like to stress, Bill talked about going in at 20, 25, 30 parts per million. And he's not kidding. We're, the inclusion rate is that low. And that's what makes USAN affordable. I know a lot of people will initially balk at the price, but when you compare the inclusion rate 
to whatever it is you're using now, you'll find that it's cost comparative, but the results just can't be compared. So any questions, comments? I'm gonna get rid of this screen. There we go. I got a whole bunch of muted microphones that I can see. <laughs> and, uh, oh, there's somebody. Uh, oh, Gideon, which is Joel, says, let people know by they can ask questions by writing in here. So on the right side of your screen where it says chat, if you've got a question, you can chat, you can just plug it in there. And um, I will see it and relate it to people. Nobody has any questions. It's Friday. <laughs> I cannot believe that I did such a thorough job that no one has any questions. Joel, you must have a question. Which one? When am I getting more product? <laughs> Maybe I want to get it. Yeah. Um, we do currently have uh, two 40 foot containers on their way to us. Uh, that's a, not to use a rude phrase, that is a boatload of product, my friends. So it is, uh, it's on its way shipping. If you've had to buy anything from overseas, shipping is an absolute nightmare right now. So we have two 40 footers on their way and uh, we're, we're fully capable. I do have an answer for Joel's question. He sent me a text there this morning uh, when I was hooking up that turkey barn um, about uh, sulfite and water, whether there's a specific filter to take it out. And uh, other than reverse osmosis, uh, which I'm not a fan of, um, just because of the fact you're stripping all the mineral out of the water. No, there isn't. But Hewis sand will break down sulfite, uh, Joel. Um, it, it will lower the sulfite level in water uh, just because it's, a, it's, it's based off of sulfur. So it will, it will uh, break it down um, significantly. So that's uh, about as good. A carbon filter will pick up a little bit um, to a degree. Bill, um, Mr. Waldner wants to know, does it take care of manganese? It breaks it down uh, only um, about 20 percent and that's about all we can do with manganese is, is break it down to about 20 to 30 percent. Uh, it will not totally strip it out or, or break it down completely. Um, in, in high use manganese cases, um, if you're using a lot of water and, and you're dosing heavy, uh, you will see it, it'll start to form a kind of like a, a gray um, sludge. Uh, but that's, that has to be in an extremely high usage case um, and a lot of, a lot of HUSAN going into the water to do that. I've only had one case in Ontario where it's done that. So, and this farm had extremely high manganese, like I'm talking way off the chart. So if, if you're uh, w with uh, what I need to see is the water test and I could tell you where we'd be at. Um, oh, so the follow-up question, Bill, is what, how many parts per million do you have to put in to eliminate 20% of your manganese, do you know? That's, that's running at between 20 and 30 parts per million. Okay, so that's a standard. That's standard, standard run. run. That's a standard run. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the time we d okay. Here's another one coming in. Yep. Am I able to clean the water lines with this product, and how? Okay. Uh, yeah, you can by loading the lines up and leaving it sit. But if this product is running in your water lines all the time, uh, Tim, um, it it uh, you won't need to use a regular cleaner. The lines will be clean when you're done the end of the flock. And what we recommend is they just, uh, you just load the line up, leave it at 40 to 50 parts per million. Uh, some people leave it higher. I got some people leave it at 100 parts per million. Uh, the day before your new flock comes in, flush the lines out and, and they're clean and ready to go. But if you're running Hewisan all the time, uh, your lines will be clean and you won't have to use a cleaner. I'd actually be bold enough to say, uh, if you're using USAN just to clean your lines between flocks, that's not the best way to use the product because you're not getting any of the animal gut health benefit and you're not stopping the transfer of bacteria through the water lines when the birds are in the barn. 
And that's when you get the best benefit is when you keep the birds from contaminating each other and you're getting a little bit of hydrogen peroxide to help them with their gut health. Um, yeah. Tim also wants to know, will it be clean at 25 parts per million? I'm yes. running 11 yeah. parts per million guys and it's keeping my lines clean in the whole colony. At 11 parts per million, 11, 12. Really? Yeah, yeah. that's all we're running. I know there's somebody on here as well, like his colony as well. He really have problems with, he had white clear packs for a research line and he started running it at 12 as well. It took four days, he started to see where it started to strip off already. I talked to him this morning and that's true. That's exactly right. Uh, Somebody is telling me their peroxide contains chelated minerals. Is that possible? <laughs> Phil? Okay. Yeah, there are, there are some products out there that, that do. Uh, ours doesn't. And I, I don't see the benefit of chelated minerals in, in a peroxide product. Um, it, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, I, I think it's more of a, a, a sales approach as versus a scientific approach. Um, with HSP, we pretty well look strictly at the science and, and what it can do and the benefits it can do for humans and animals and uh, chelated minerals. I'm, I'm, I, I just can't see the, the scientific benefit of it. Um, we, we try really hard not to talk about other people's products because there may be something about them that we don't know. But what Bill is too nice to say is at 30 parts per million, what possible benefit would chelated minerals be? You're just not putting enough in the water. So yeah, it's possible. Bill, what, uh, I know Dave touched on it a little bit, Compared to a regular peroxide, like it's the 35% food grade or whatever, what's, what's the difference? But they just for the guys here. Okay. Uh, Joel, yeah, we've discussed this before. And, and uh, the, the difference is that, that your, your regular everyday garden variety peroxide and is, is it, when it was invented and, and it was invented as a one-time contact kill oxidized cleaner. That was it. It was the whole idea was a disinfect. It was meant, uh, it's been used in hospitals for years. It's been used in the medical industry, but it was meant to, to kill once. And then that was it. And that's what, that's how it's kind of got a bad name out in the industry. I shouldn't say a bad name, but it's never been really as effective as what, uh, what we wanted it to be. So regular peroxide, you start putting it in your water lines. And, and I recently had a guy tell me they were putting it in at 200 parts per million and it wasn't getting to the end of the lines. Well, first of all, 200 parts per million, if there's any animals along the way, anything over 70 parts per million, we get what we call water refusal and animals will, will, will not drink the amount of water they should. They'll, they'll only drink enough to stay alive and that's it. And so, uh, with the stabilized peroxide, you're able to go in, put it in at a much lower rate. And as David explained earlier, it has a multiple contact kill. So, uh, and in fact, there has been measurements where they've shown scientifically that it will kill up to 6,000 times more. Now that doesn't mean it's 6,000 times stronger. That just means it lasts that much longer. So that's why you can go at a lower rate and, and it will just keep killing and killing and killing. And again, depending on other factors in the water. It depends on mineral content. It depends on the types of bacteria you're working with, um, how fast the bacteria is breeding. Uh, there's, there's multiple factors, but in a standard case, uh, it, it kills many, many, many times more than your regular peroxide. And uh, it wasn't, you see, back in the 30s, they actually uh, found out they could stabilize peroxide, but it was very, very expensive. And it was in 1954 that, that they actually uh, come up with a, a methodology of doing it that was, um, uh, I would say, less expensive, but still expensive. And, and so it, it was used in the medical industry for a long time. And then in the 90s, uh, early 2000s, they just started to develop it where you could actually manufacture it on a large scale rate. And, and this is where 
you know, the, uh, the different types of silver. There are peroxides out there, other peroxides out there with silver in it. Um, a lot of them are not using ionic silver uh, because it is a very expensive silver to use. It, it is a medical grade silver. It's what hospitals use and, and, and the medical industry uses in the healing process. And that is part of why the Huasan product works as well as it does because not only does it, it um, help an animal's gut, but if the gut has lesions and stuff from, from, uh, from bacterial uh, infections, uh, it actually helps with the healing process and getting that animal back to its, to its, its best form of digesting food. Did that answer, Joel? Yeah, there's a question here, Bill, or Ron, or can you, can you see the questions on the bottom right there, Bill? Okay, yep. Uh, the one about will it lower pH, and if not, will it work as good in high pH, like 9 or higher? Okay, uh, it, will, it will lower pH. Uh, the, the figure they give us is about 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So if you have, a say, a, a, an 8 count, uh, it will take it down to about 7.5. You can use a certain amount of acid with um, stabilized hydrogen peroxide. So you could, you could use a citric acid, you could use, we have some producers using uh, the maple blue product to get down where they just wanna get down to about 6.8, somewhere in there, 6.6. 6. Um, I've never been a fan of just dropping the pH way, way down low in the poultry industry. Um, there is a study that's been done. Uh, it was actually done here in Ontario by a university student at the University of Ottawa, and she's worked on it for four years. And what her study has shown is that if you can have a bird's gut working at uh, really healthy and with good, clean water, uh, the bird will correct the pH itself in its gut. And uh, I understand that study has been passed on to Master Feeds. Um, that was the last I heard about it, that, um, that it, uh, that's where it's at. Okay. Um, can you see the one that says... Yeah, yeah. yeah. about okay. bugs in the rumen. Uh, okay. So when we put a gram uh, positive charge in, in, in the ionic silver, and that's what, that's what, that's what they do, they actually put a charge in that's gram positive. It works with your gram positive bacteria. So it will only, it will only sort out and, and kill anything that's negative. And in a cow's gut, we've, we've had no problem with it lowering um, uh, the microbes in the gut. In fact, it's, uh, they, they claim, uh, University of Michigan claims that the reason why cow dairy herds that are on hydrogen peroxide Unstabilized peroxide, the reason why they have less turned stomachs is because it helps digest the food the way it's supposed to be. And, and it cuts down from the stomach uh, being impacted. And uh, so that's where you, you get away from, from flipped stomachs and things like that. Uh, another thing, just a little sidebar. One of the things they've noticed with dairy herds on Huasan is there's very, very few cows ever have um, retain placentas. And when we asked the people, the really smart people, why, they said, because if you have a cow who's at optimum health, they will just naturally, uh, they, they will not have retained placentas, placentas, and they will also breed back quicker just because they're a healthier animal. And it's so uh, when you think it's 80% of the ration or 82% of the ration is water that's going through a dairy cow, uh, it only makes sense to try to have it as clean and as, as healthy a water as possible. Bill, there was a question up there from Elias Waldner um, about basically what he says is another big issue with peroxide, especially the stabilized stronger ones, is using the wrong acid, causing horrible reaction in the water in the matter of days. What are your thoughts, recommendations on that? Okay. We haven't, run, we haven't run into an acid reaction, have we? No, we haven't. No. Uh, yeah. Now, is he talking about is using it as a cleaner in the water lines in a barn? He may like be. As, Maybe. as for his milking equipment? Yes, probably. Okay. Oh, no, he thought it's a different one. He's a chicken guy. Oh, he's a chicken oh, guy. Okay. <laughs> okay, just. Okay, yeah. So the question was, you know, is there a, 
is there a problem with using it with the, can we pick the wrong acid to use when you're using it? Yeah, I don't recommend sulfuric acid. Uh, some guys have tried it. Yeah. Um, I would, and, and you don't go in at, at a, at a really high rate. Um, just at the, uh, what you're trying to do is you're just trying to bring your, your pH down. Um, if you want to try to get it down to under seven, you know, in, in, in mids to high sixes, um, don't do that where they're trying to drop it down into the fives. Uh, you will have some problems. That's, and it's not only with the USN, th there'll be other problems along the way as well. Okay. Yeah. And then there's that question from plain view about, will there be any reaction with other chemicals used when washing milk lines or bulk tank? Okay. Uh, not at, at the low rate we're going in at, at the low inclusion rate. No, no, okay. we've, We've got guys doing it and haven't had any problem. Now, a lot of the farms we have that are on USN, uh, they have the they usually don't have USN going into their their system for washing for in the barn, especially robot systems. Uh, they will they will have their injection port, so it's going to the heifers, the cows, um, and to to the calves, um, so that we're not involved in the actual washing of, of a robot unit. Because most robot units, those companies have their own um, uh, type of peroxide they use for washing. Uh, um, well, I, I know, um, oh, uh, Lely does. And so they have a different system, okay, a different product. We've, uh, in our dairy barn, and at least two others, they use it for washing their robots, and there's no, there's no issues. Okay with no reacting or anything. Yeah. Um, there's a question there, Bill. Our water has coliform, and if you don't bring pH down before chlorine, pH of nine, chlorine <coughs> will make coliform grow. Sorry. I, I'm not following that one, but. Okay, so what, what he's actually saying, David, is that, that their, their, their pH is very, very high. Sure, yeah. Okay? And, and so uh, chlorine, uh, if you can't bring it down, chlorine will, act, and, and that's a fact, it will actually enhance the growth of coliforms. I had no idea. Because, because chlorine will only kill 80%. So you're, you're never, you're never going to get rid of all the coliforms with, with um, chlorine. You're looking at, uh, with our product, USN, you're looking at a 99.999% kill. Uh, even at uh, a pH of nine. Um, and, and actually, if you have a pH of nine, with USN going in, you're going to have a pH of eight, five. That's what it'll, that's where you'll be at. And, and you will get a kill on, on coliforms, especially. Um, coliforms E. coli, uh, they're a pretty easy kill um, because they're very, very sensitive to, to a USN uh, type peroxide. Bill, see if this makes sense. I got a customer called by 8.7 8 pH and it mm -hmm. cut out all his acid. Like he, at first he was using it mm -hmm. with an acid and he didn't have any problems. And then I talked to him one day and he asked me, like, well, supposedly you can cut it out. And he did. And it's, he, he's, been, he's, had, he's been running it without acid for about six months now. Mm -hmm. no, never an issue. I'm trying to get our guys here to do it, but they wouldn't listen. <laughs> He's sitting right beside me. That's okay. <laughs> well, Jim, Jim is our hog expert, and Jim knows about just about as much as there is to know about a pig. Uh, what's your what's your comment, Jim? Just go ahead, Bill. <clears throat> My what's happening? Earpiece backed out on it. Yeah. What's happened there? What's happened there, Joel? Is that if he's running Hewisan? And and uh, it's going through hogs. He's actually he's actually lowered the pH already, uh, somewhat. And the other thing that's happened is too. It, it obviously the hillisand is working at cleaning up the water because the pig's gut is running at, at optimum, and that means it's running really healthy. And and if you can any animal, if they're not if they're not stressed, and they're not battling E. coli coliforms all those things that create those gut stresses uh, and, and the good bacteria is allowed to digest the food, uh, they'll end up with a healthy pig. And it's the, the problem, Joel, for a long, long time was 
there really was nothing out there that was really going to clean things up the way it needed to be cleaned up. So we ended up uh, using the acid. And I mean, you can't condemn the people, you know, for, for the theory behind it, because that was what they had to work with. It's, it's just, you know, it's just like some of the, the new medications that are out there in the world now. Um, you know, they can, they can take a person in and, and uh, 25 years ago, if they did heart surgery on you, well, you might have lived and you might not have. Uh, today, if they take you in and do it, there's about a 95% or 99% chance you're going to make it. So it's just like, it's just the evolution of, of products and, and Hewisand's one that's been, it's right out in the lead. Yeah, just to add to that, the, it's unfortunate the old standby is still acid. Get it down to five pH. Veterinarians, everybody, it's, it's still the old school. We see it in all livestock between acidify and, and even chlorine. It peroxide as that natural scares the daylights out of a lot of the veterinarians out there. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, will it lower butter fat? No. Uh, in most cases, we've, been, we've seen increases in butter fat production. Perfect. Uh, fats and proteins. Layer operation. When using this product, do I need to add anything in feed for gut health, or is this product enough? This product oh, is... And how does it reach the hind gut? Oh, no. Does it reach? Yeah. Different, 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 different question. question. That's for dairy cows, okay. Yeah. See, I knew that. Um, do you need to add anything else for gut health? Anything else in the feed for gut health? Okay, for, for, for the layer operations, yeah. um, we, we've seen, what we see in layer operations is uh, a longer peak. And, and that's what our layer producers tell us, that they see a longer peak when, they, when, when the layer hands peak, uh, they hold that peak longer. And the other, yeah, thing, the other thing they've seen is uh, lower, lower, lower bird mortality consistently. Uh, every layer flock we're in has told us that, uh, that they do see uh, a lower, um, lower bird mortality. And as, as far as your question goes, do you need to add anything to the feed for gut health? We are not feed people. We are the water people. So we will tell you that we will clean your water. We will make it clean. We will improve the animal's gut health but we are not here to take the place of your nutritionist um, and the people who know that side of the business. Uh, Bill, no? Yeah. How does it reach the hind gut? Does it not get neutralized in the crop in a layer? Wow, we've never, uh, can't say we've ever encountered it. We've always seen in, in a layer bird, We've seen, uh, cons I have to go by what the farmers tell us. Uh, we've seen consistency in, in the fact that the bird is healthier. Uh, it maintains its peak longer. And, and obviously it's getting through to the, to the, final, to the final gut. Um, but that's, you know, that's a good question. And uh, I will ask somebody a lot smarter than me to get me the answer for that, okay? And, and get back to you. I take it is, uh, what, what colony asked that question? Um, that would be Elias Waldner. You can send it to me, Bill. He's from Baker Colony out here. Okay, okay. I will, I will, I will get the answer for that. That's a good question. That's uh, one I've never had thrown at me, and I'm not going to try to BS you. And uh, it's something that uh, obviously, um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk to the really smart people, and they'll tell me. Okay, because you guys have to realize that I'm not that sharp, eh? <laughs> Um, there's a question here about using analyte, that they're using yeah. analyte already. Is it okay to add this product? And also, this is a hog operation. Is it okay to add this product? And also, we use a pH acid to reduce pH, so I assume we can pull something. No? The sim yeah, the simple answer is pull your acid. You don't need to lower the pH with the peroxide because of the fact of the two gram negatives you are trying to kill. Yeah. What about that's, analyte? That's the simple. What about analyte, Jim? Analyte's not being used a lot here in Ontario. I'm not really familiar with it, to be honest with you. Bill, do you know anything about analyte? 
Well, it's it's just like it's like uh, some of these places that use electrolyte, uh, but it's just a different a different commercial variety. In my understanding of analyte, um, I, I I haven't got anybody on it, so I no, I, I, I got don't. one guy on it, and he, have you? All it is, guys, is basically like a chlorine. It just kills it all. So analyte is like a chlorine. Okay, it's not it's not like an electrolyte then. No. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, then I wouldn't I wouldn't be using it, but not with hydrogen peroxide because all you're doing is you're you're wasting the hydrogen peroxide, the, the HSP. Yeah, yeah, they don't need it. Yeah. If, it if it's a, if it's being used as a disinfectant, yes, you can get rid of it, and you can also get rid of your acid. Yeah. Um, Save you some money. Elias is saying it kills bacteria. Does it kill good bacteria? Like HSP. Yes. No. No. It doesn't kill good bacteria. It only that's why it, when you put the charge with it, that's the difference between it and regular peroxide. When you charge it with the the ionic silver, when you put the gram positive charge in it, uh, it doesn't kill good bacteria. It works with good bacteria. Um, where your regular peroxide will just any bacteria it'll kill it. Okay. I hope I that answered that properly. I'm gonna to have to look up analyte. Yeah. Uh, how does the product know good bacteria from bad bacteria? <laughs> That's very simple. It's it it's the charge. It's it's the charge they put in it. The charge will draw the the actual the gram negative bacteria to it. And it works and, like and a magnet. It kills it. Works like a magnet. Yeah, that's good good term, Jim. Yeah, it works like a magnet. Yeah. Yep. The the naturally occurring bacteria in the gut and in the body has a charge. Yep. And the hydrogen peroxide, the HSP works with bacteria with that charge. Foreign bacteria, which is the stuff we want to get out of the gut, we want to get out of the animal system, we want to kill in the water lines, that foreign bacteria is is equivalent to bad bacteria and it has the opposite charge. So the stuff that's in your body is all charged exactly the same way, the stuff that's supposed to be there. The one thing, guys, in, in the poultry industry that um, our product will not kill uh, is coccidiosis. And the reason is, is because coccidiosis is a gram-positive bacteria. And so, uh, but... Uh, the really smart people that I've worked with when we've had flocks with coccidiosis, uh, we treat it separate and they still tell their producers to stay on Huasan because it cuts out all the other stressors that uh, coccidiosis likes to work with. Uh, coccidiosis likes to attack. Uh, if the bird's under stress, it'll definitely uh, make a mess of it. So that's the one thing if you, if you are having coccidiosis, you still run the Huasan, but then you will have to run um, your, your regular treatment for coccidiosis, okay? Okay, from Brent, everyone, it is important to mix in a mixing tank on demand or on demand. Uh, depending on the, what, what your situation is there, um, if, you're, if you're running 50% and uh, it, it has a lot of uh, water and a lot of turbulence to go through before it gets to its source in the barn, you can get away without a tank. Uh, if you're if you're running 50% and uh, you have a very short distance between uh, the barn and and where you're injecting, it's best to put it through a a mixing tank. In general, poultry uses 25%. Does not require a mixing tank. Um, dairy using 50%. Bill, would it require a mixing tank? Not, no. Not, no. No. Because there's enough water volume going through yep. there. Yep. Jim, mixing tank, swine, yes or no? Yeah, <laughs> excuse me. Um, we've had this discussion just last week uh, based on the water coming in and what you got to do to it before it gets to the barn and direction going in the barn. That's okay. the biggest impact. Okay. Is there a contact time required? No. No. As soon as it hits the water, it starts to disperse. Yep. It's, it's not like regular peroxide where it needs some contact time. Yep. Would you offer a six-month free trial? I can answer that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, we have, as I said, we've got 30 million birds presently in Canada using the product. We have 
a number of solid dairy producers using it with great results and we have swine producers using it with great results. We're beyond the point now where we need to do free trials. Um, we've priced it such that it should be affordable for any operation. How is it for helping piglet scours like rotavirus type B, which is not covered by pro system RCE? It is proven against rotavirus. <clears throat> we even have a, excuse me, a veterinarian here and it happens to be an organic farm broke with rotavirus mix it a hundred parts per million, the same as you do for vegetables and spray the pigs and the sow, spray the crate. Sorry, Jim, spray the what? Spray the pig, spray the sow, spray the crate, just with a backpack sprayer, mist them down. The same as what they do for vegetables, right? As far as uh, knocking off topical fungal virus and uh, just prolong it. It is proven and registered for rotavirus. Yes, it, it is on the NSF 60 list and the yeah. CDC list as well. It is uh, it is a one minute, 30 second kill time for rotavirus, which is, it's, sl it's a little longer than uh, coronavirus, which has a 30 second kill time, but, but for rotavirus, it's, it's a little longer just because it's a tough virus. Okay. And rotavirus, I don't know, there's a type A and type B. Yeah, there's different ver oh, there's versions out there. Pro systems, it's like a lot of the viral side of it out there, guys. They've uh, typed a few, put it into the pro systems. A lot of farms, and I've seen it on the chat line are looking more and more at endogenous based on farm yep. challenges. Okay. Yeah, there's several hundred different uh, types um, that are listed and then they know there's, um, there's far more out there than what's even listed. Yeah. Uh, just because of, of what you said, Jim, just because of the, the nature of, of each farm is specific almost. Okay. Does it take care of Pseudomonas? Yes, it does. <laughs> Pseudomonas is very, very sensitive to stabilized hydrogen peroxide. Uh, it has a very quick kill time on, on Pseudomonas. And uh, if, you can, if you can get it in and get it into the pigs, uh, usually if you have an outbreak of Pseudomonas, um, it's going to be coming from your, your, your pond or your lagoon or your slough. I mean, wherever your water source is, sometimes even from wells. Um, it's also brought in uh, by, by birds, wild birds. And, and yes, it can be a tough one, but it, it will kill it. It's, it's been proven over and over again. Yeah, um, the hog, whoever hog barn is wants to specify that that is Pseudomotus aeruginosa. Yeah, aeruginosa is the tough one. It is, okay. it's really nasty. That's why we recommend a much higher kill rate for it than just a regular standard rate. You got anything to add to that, Jim, about the pseudomonas? Again, you got it. And, and again, guys, a, a lot of it, we don't see a lot of pseudomonas here uh, because we are drawn from wells, not open reservoirs. You guys got the Canada geese and the cranes out there shitting in the pond. That's what keeps it highlight. The longer that stands, the, the worse it gets. So how, how high would pseudomon like with the case of pseudomon is how high would you have to run them? If you got a really bad outbreak, um, I would I would go up as high as, as 60, 65 parts per million. I, I wouldn't go over 70. Um, just just to get it just to get it cleaned up. Like I wouldn't stay at that for very long, but just to get it cleaned up. Um, but but it is, yeah, it, it's a bad one. Uh, your, your 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 customer there is right. It's it's a nasty one to deal with. Um, and one, once they once they see improvement, they can start to turn it back too, you know. But but just initially hit it. You want to hit it good. Um, we had a situation. Oh, was well, that be about a year ago now? We got a call from Manitoba, a large operation, and uh, they were having trouble with um, pseudomonas, and their plumber had told them to put uh, the water at 250 parts per million for the pigs. 
And of course the pigs start dying really quickly. And uh, when, when we did get talking to the operation, they, they said, well, we're telling me what was happening. And, and they said, well, I think the problem is your pigs aren't drinking any water. And so if the pigs aren't drinking any water, the pseudonymous just, it just runs rampant and it will kill them far quicker. They, they were actually dying of dehydration. Um, so once they got it turned around and started treating it, way it went, they were in good shape. So that was, uh, um, I think that was one of Roger's customers maybe that had, had called us. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah. And it is certified for uh, organic, right? Yes. yes. Certified for organic, both here and in the U.S. We just got the U.S. What is the cost using this product in normal inclusion rates? Um, I would say that we are price competitive. Um, it would have to. We, we, sorry. We did break it. Like using the 25,000 birds in a 25 kilo jug, it's just over a penny a bird at 25 ppm is what the cost. Yeah, but that's what I like to use, Dave, is uh, I help our feral to finish. No, sorry. Feral and hot nursery used to use five or six barrels of 35% food grade product a year with 25% who was in eight and a half months. Five barrels, Joel? Yeah, five barrels. They used five or five to six barrels a year. Yeah. Now that it's using USM, it's eight and a half months for one barrel. One, one barrel. barrel. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We yeah. see that quite often. Yeah. yeah. It is. It is so low inclusion that it really does work out. Yeah. There was nothing um, popped up Eli there. Elias, probably turn off the USM when you're adding vitamins through the water. Uh, you don't have to, um, but if you are vaccinating. You do have to, sure. and and with vaccinations, there's two ways of doing it. One, you can you can turn it off uh, 24 hours ahead of time, or you can you can uh, turn it off, flush your lines out, and start your vaccine. Okay, so that's just, two, yeah. two methods. Just to add to that, I ran into this the other day, where a different uh, company actually had the peroxide injection after their medication injection or Dositron. So you would be putting full power into it. We suggest I install the injection point well before uh, your injection point for your medication or vitamin. How effective is it towards strep suis? The suicide diseases Bill, we haven't run into that with the guys here yet. I haven't had that issue to deal with. No, thinking, not at we, all. We can help you, but that's, we just haven't had to deal with it. Hmm. Joel, what do you see with it? Do you see much with strep suicide? Oh, we see strep like we've had, like we've had an hour barn. Yeah, we started using uh, USN. We haven't had it, and uh, there's two more guys. They were really bad on it, and it they say like it's they got it under control. Yeah, like, where they used to use 15, 20 picks a week, they're losing three or four. Well, and, and see the different like with strep suicide, that's neurological, right? Yeah. So the aspect, and this goes back to what Bill said earlier. Um, what the one vet had said about keeping the animals on it, you keep the rest of the immune system pumped and, and Hewisand's balancing that out. No different, like a PERS virus in the barn. They don't die from PERS, it's the secondaries. It, it opens the door, weakens the immune system. You get the E. coli, you get the other bacteria working against it. So keeping them on, Hewisan is going to keep that animal in a healthier, uh, more powerful immune uh, position. It looks like strep suis is gram positive. For what that's worth. Yeah. That, well, that just says it right there. Yeah. 
have you guys noticed uh, in out of Ontario, days to market in hogs uh, go down when you're on this stuff? Say that again. Have you guys heard of like days to market for finisher hogs? Oh, days to market. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, the organic guys especially, like that's they they're. You, I'm at a point now. I want the guys to turn it down. Their lines are clean. Just get the 10 ppm. The hogs, like they say, they're, they're happier. They're eating more. They're converting better. They're growing faster. That's one thing I'm getting. People like hog guys that start out with them, especially their grower. And finisher the, the hogs get really hyper like for, on the product for three days yeah and to actually get to the point where they're wild and then they just kind of settle down and i've had one guy tell me he dropped three days to market ever since he started using it well and it's it's funny because they everybody says that we get a lot with the broilers too that they're more active right they're like they're on steroids and yet the guys with the finisher barns that have tail biting issues swear it, it eliminates it. I like to me, tail biting still goes back to gut contentment. Growth goes back to gut contentment. So even a healthy hog, especially with the price of commodities, if we're using alternative ingredients, the peroxide in the gut and helping uh, maintain a healthy pH in the gut is is a true benefit how do you know water lines are clean exactly yeah, and that's the other thing when when somebody asks about cost it's not just the cost of the product it's the cost of what you're eliminating what you no yeah. longer need to use the disinfectant between lines the acids the rest of them it really does it really does add up quickly in terms of savings well it, it cut mortality out that's you know i'll i'll use the uh, hundred and fifty thousand birds that we did the trial three crops through the broiler barn he averaged eight thousand dollars more per barn so on fifty thousand birds or one hundred and fifty thousand birds he averaged twenty four thousand more dollars out of that barn Lower two days in the in the grow finish barn. We know what that costs. Yeah, and, and what's the value to milking ten percent less cows because your milk your milk volume goes up ten percent? You know, could it be effective for leucosis in dairy? The only the only portion I, I read a little article on this, and the only uh, thing that that uh, the article specified was is about the health of the cow and and if you can get a cow that uh, you know healthy her immune system is in really really good shape that's that's where the effectiveness comes in there um is it a cure for leucosis no it's not um uh, it, it isn't uh from plain view i see there's uh uh what's the time frame for dairy cows to see we have had dairy herds that have as, as quickly as two weeks seen a difference in things like milk production. Uh, it's usually more over a six month period where you'll see um, things like um, cows breeding back quicker, uh, milk production. Uh, not every herd have we seen milk production go up, but a lot of them we have. Uh, we've seen uh, herds, uh, they, they tell us that their their feed conversion is better. They're, they're actually... Uh, eating less feed and getting more milk, which is, is a good thing as far as I'm concerned in the dairy industry. Um, cell count. Yeah. But uh, just just better cow health. Uh, somatic cell counts, we've had a number of herds have told us that their somatic cell counts have dropped uh, significantly. We had one herd here in Ontario we had to work with quite a bit. Um, when we started out, they were, they were running just almost 400,000 somatic cell count. And that was the herd, it was a tie stall barn. Uh, we started working with them that every time they bedded the cows, they would spray down the mats, just the back three feet of the mats. Um, and so if there's any drippage or any milk leaking, uh, it cut down that bacterial level. And then when they pulled the straw back, uh, 
they, they, it seemed to help. Uh, they dropped their count down. They're around 120 right now. And uh, they seem pretty happy with that. Uh, and we put that program in place in a couple of large freestall barns where, where they were also having some problems. We've, we've uh, helped them get, get that under control. Is it fair to say, Bill, you'll get best results once you've been through a full cycle from dry cow through service through milking and then back to dry cow again? Oh, for sure, for sure. But the herds that have been on it now for yeah. well, one of the top herds in Ontario, uh, RG and G Farms, um, they've been on it now um, uh, for three years since we first started selling it, and uh, their their BCA is about 350. I think their composite BCA, which is I mean they've they've sure uh, knocked off some big records. But they're they're seeing their cows breeding back quicker. Uh, they have a nice low calving interval. Um, very, very rarely do they ever have a problem with a, uh, a displaced stomach, and uh, they just have really good cow health, and that's uh, that's part of the program. But they have stuck with it religiously right from day one, and and really worked at it. Troughs are clean. That's one of the first things most people notice is their water troughs. The biofilm in the troughs is gone, and uh, it cleans it right up. It gets rid of that slime that's in the trough. And if, if a cow, if you get rid of that slime, a cow will drink more water. Uh, one barn here in Ontario, we did, they had a water meter in before we started working with them and they had kept track of their water. When we put our system in and, and now this guy milked 60 cows in tie stalls three times a day and they saw their milk production go from 38 liters a day to 47 liters a day per cow but they also noticed that after the noon milking, the cows drank 1,600 more liters of water. They, and so uh, it, it jumped their water consumption. And of course, they, they ended up getting more milk production too. There's one about when you say improvement in reproduction well, alone, in what would be the percentage improvement in pregnancy like rate? Or average in a spokes of three, well, six feet. One of the herds we've worked with a lot here in Ontario, uh, they were averaging about uh, 3.5 breeding per cow. Isn't and they're down to 1.4 now. And so and that's on an, an 80 cow herd. So they're, you know, they've been able to significantly change it. Sorry, Bill, can you say that can you say that again? There was some interference. Okay. They they were they were around a 3.5, 3.4, 3.5. Uh, breedings per cow. They were having a lot of trouble getting cows in calf. And uh, when, when we got them on the program, uh, they are now sitting at uh, 1.4. And they're, they're quite happy with that. And now that was the same herd we, we worked with on, on some other issues too. They were, they had, when we started, we started them, I think in about April or May. And up to that point that year, they had had seven displaced stomachs. And uh, they've been now on it for three years and, and, and they have had one displaced stomach in three years. And they blame that on themselves because it was a heifer they brought up from the other barn and put her in. And the first thing she did was gorge herself on corn silage. And so they, they said it was no, it was their mistake, not, not the product. As long as it wasn't us. <laughs> Well, they, they said they said it was their their uh, it was their management error. So, I think we've run out of questions. Joel, anything to add? No, not what I know of. Just send me product. <laughs> <laughs> it's on its way. It's on its way. All right. If that's it for the questions, we will let you all go. You know what, there's, there's 18 of you on this call and I really appreciate your time and your attention. Um, we don't take it for granted. Bill, sorry, was there something you wanted to? No, I just wanted to thank everybody that joined in today. And uh, if you have a question and uh, you wanna call either Jim or I, we're available, um, give us a call. And uh, the odd time, it'll take me a little bit to get back to you, or Jim, we're, we, we do have uh, fairly full plates, but, or you can call David too, and uh, we'll, 
We'll, uh, yeah, sorry, Dave, didn't mean to put you down on the bottom. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Call the 1-800, Dave will answer. Yeah. We'll, exactly. We'll, um, we'll work with you, that's for sure. Yeah, we, we welcome your questions. We welcome, you know, bring us your unique issues. Um, we like to say, you can't scare us. Whatever you got, bring it. We'll help you deal with it, because ultimately, we want to help you solve your water problem. And Elias Walder, I think, wins the prize for the most questions today. So we'll have to, yep. Joel, we'll have to send him a fly swatter or something. Uh, Joel, I will, I will get to uh, looking that up. I'll talk to some of the poultry specialist people about what it does in the final gut on a chicken. And I will find that out. Uh, that's got me curious now, too. So, okay, we'll, okay. We'll, get, we'll get an answer for you for that. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Stay safe. Bye now. Bye. Bye. And